Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today, I want to tackle mecha quartz. What is mecha quartz? How does it differ from regular quartz? How does it differ from non-quartz automatic? Just take a few minutes to describe it all. A lot of people get confused with mecha quartz because, in my opinion, watches have come out with movements that kind of give the sentiment that they're mecha quartz, but they're actually not. The first thing I want to do is introduce you to some friends here. I have a Hemel chronograph, mecha quartz movement, uh, VK64. Collins, non-mecha quartz, regular quartz chronograph, an ISA movement. Seiko solar chronograph movement, straight quartz chrono. And my personal watch, a Zin 757 UTC Chrono, uh, powered by a Valjou, uh, kind of a little bit of a modified Valjou 7750. So what is Mecha Quartz? Mecha Quartz basically combines quartz accuracy and quartz power with a mechanical chronograph module. Sounds like a lot, but what does it mean? So when I... This, so this is a battery-operated quartz watch. It has quartz accuracy. It will be extremely accurate. When I depress the plunger here for the chronograph, the second's hand will start moving. After one revolution, or as it starts revolving, you'll see this hand start to index to uh, denote one minute has passed. On the right here, we have this is a 24-hour scale. You can disregard this subdial. This watch does not have running seconds. That's neither here nor there for this conversation. I start the chrono. Well, you know what? I, I already messed up. I start the chrono. You hear a click. Ready? Very nice, satisfying mechanical click. The seconds hand, the chrono elapsed seconds hand goes off smoothly. Uh, not ticking once a second, ticking multiple times a second. Kind of an indication that it's a mechanical chrono movement, uh, but not the end all be all. And then I'm going to zoom in on that uh, 60 minute register. If you watch this 60 minute register on the left, you'll see it's actually already forward of zero minutes on its way to one minute. After one complete minute, it will be pointing at the minute. You can see that right there. Okay, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to reset it. Watch what happens to the seconds hand and this elapsed minute hand. They immediately, immediately snap back to zero. That is the mechanical portion. So what's going on here? No, I'm not going to open them up and, and show you inside because I don't want to break the watches. Now, and plus, you really can't see much. But it is a quartz-driven movement. So there's a battery, and there is a quartz oscillator, and that is controlling the motor. There's only one motor. There's um, basically one driving uh, device, one engine, if you will, and that drives the hands. At the same time, now there is a gear train that is usually inactive, but when you activate the chrono with that click, you are actuating that mechanical gear train to interface with the running train of the watch, and that causes this hand to move. Cool? So it's a mechanical mechanism on top of a quartz movement. Uh, pluses, minuses, <laughs> pluses, it's cool. Uh, it's accurate. Um, minuses, well, because it's a linked train, you cannot adjust the hands individually like you can on a conventional chrono. Generally not an issue because on mechanical chronos, the hands don't slip um, like they do on quartz chronos, but still something to be made aware of. But it's just cool. Now, where do people sometimes get confused? And it, it's not a bad thing. I mean, this is a Collins chrono with an ISA movement. Now, what this one does, very similar in fashion, when I start it with that satisfying click, you'll see the second hand is moving at nice, even intervals. And we think, oh, nice click, mecha quartz. You know, it has to be, right? It's running like a mechanical would. You know, intervals of whatever, four times a second. Uh, I've got running second subdial here on the right, and I've got uh, some kind of elapsed minutes here on the left. Um, this might not be zeroed. I really just took it out of the box. When I stop it, Satisfying click, but watch what happens when I reset. I press the bottom button. I know it might be tough to see this on camera. Watch that hand. See how it slowly goes around to zero? That's an 
immediate indication that the watch, well, this watch needs to be registered. These hands need to be moved. I'll get that in a second. Uh, that's an immediate indication that it is not a mechanical movement. Because when it's mechanical movement on top of a quartz module or a mechanical movement in general, it snaps back to zero because it's all spring loaded. Very important. Um, one of my watch and learns in the past, I showed you how to zero a chronograph. So that this watch needs that uh, procedure to be done, but that is normal. What is it not? This is another ordinary chrono, but this guy isn't pretending to be anything. Soft push buttons, no clicks. Still kind of moves at a nice even pace, but that's nice. It's soothing, it's satisfying. Uh, we have running seconds here, elapsed minutes, 24 hour timer, but stop. Reset, nice smooth around. So what I want to show with this and with this is that all these hands, chrono hand, minute hand, uh, excuse me, chrono hand, uh, elapsed minute hand, if it had an elapsed hour hand, this seconds hand, this elapsed minutes hand, can all be adjusted because they're all driven by separate motors. A little stepper motors, stepper motor here, stepper motor here, uh, no stepper motor there because that's tied to the regular time, and stepper motor in the center uh, for the chrono seconds. Those motors can all be moved such that their zero position um, you know, lines up with the marks on the dial. On this, you've only got one motor, so you can't do that. And then at the end, I just want to bring out you know, my guy, just to kind of show you what the Mecca Quartz is emulating. Um, granted, this is a, a fairly expensive watch. Um, runs on a Valjoux movement with a, uh, a, a UTC module. Um, UTC and GMT we use interchangeably. Um, they are not interchangeable at the scientific level. Uh, if our satellites were running on GMT instead of UTC, um, we would all get lost. Um, the, the, the difference is extremely, extremely buried in the details. Anyway, uh, so to start this chrono, this chrono yours has no running seconds. It has uh, hours, minutes, and then elapsed seconds. Very satisfying click. I mean, that's that satisfaction. Uh, so when this revolves, I'll get my minutes indicator to slowly, um, it'll go to one, two, three, around, and then the hour dial will start. But watch, stop. This is a true mechanical chrono, ready? Watch the second hand. Snaps right back to zero, just like our friend the Hemel did. I do not know of a quartz chronograph, non-mecha quartz, that actually has the same snap back, snap back action. I mean, there's not a load of mecha quartz movements out there to begin with. The Seiko VK64 is probably, you know, one of the, uh, the VK line, I should say, is probably one of the most used lines there is. Um, you know what? I'm going to close it up right there. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing the difference between a mecha quartz, a regular quartz, and a mechanical chrono. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not done so. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.